Welcome to DocBend's Micronutrients. In this episode, I'd like to speak about alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid, ALA, is an organosulfur compound produced from plants, animals, and humans and exists in nature. ALA is also known as thiotic acid and it is essential for the function of several enzymes of oxidative metabolism. ALA was discovered in 1937 by Snell, but only in 1951 was it isolated by Reed. Now, the first clinical use of ALA has been described in Germany in 1959 for the treatment of acute poisoning with amantia phyllitis, commonly known as death cap mushrooms, a deadly poison widely distributed in Europe. ALA and its reduced form DHLA are considered powerful natural antioxidants with a scavenging capacity for many reactive oxygen species. So we have DHLA and ALA. DHLA is a potent antioxidant that can neutralize free radicals without becoming one in the process, a real advantage. Furthermore, ALA simultaneously regenerates other antioxidant factors such as vitamin C and E, subsequently increasing glutathione synthesis as well. ALA and DHLA have some important advantages over other antioxidant agents such as vitamin E and vitamin C. This is because they have amphiphilic properties. Amphiphilic means they like both fat, that is lipophilic, as well as hydrophilic. They also like water. And that confers their antioxidant actions in the membrane as well as the cytosol of cells. Now, in the Krebs cycle, Krebs cycle happens in the mitochondria. It is also called the citric acid cycle, where ATP or the energy currency is being generated. So ALA plays an important role in various chemical reactions in the Krebs cycle, acting as a cofactor for some enzymatic complexes involved in energy generation or for the cell. So let's look into some of the clinical manifestations of alpha lipoic acid challenges when alpha lipoic acid levels drop in blood. So if you look into the publications on ALA and health, there are a lot of publications on its anti-diabetes potential. Now we know that diabetes is a challenge that, ca that is caused by insulin resistance which is manifested as increased sugar levels in blood. We also know that there is, there is an increase in or an excessive amount of ROS or reactive oxygen species generated with impairment of antioxidant potential in cells. So we have several studies now that have highlighted the potential use of ALA in diabetes because of its ability to increase both sugar uptake in insulin sensitive and insulin resistant muscle tissue. And it can also stimulate glucose uptake in cells. Alzheimer's disease, which is now called as type 3 diabetes. It is a neurological disease characterized by cognitive, functional and behavioral alterations. There is memory loss which has been linked to the formation of some particles called as beta amyloid plaques in the brain. So we have substantial evidence that has supported the implication of oxidative stress in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. Now ALA is a fabulous antioxidant for such purposes. We also have studies that have shown that ALA has anti-dementia or anti-Alzheimer's disease properties by increasing something called as acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter. 
cardiovascular disease and endothelial function. The main cause of mortality in non-diabetic as well as in diabetic subjects worldwide is cardiovascular disease. Now ALA which has antioxidant as well as anti-inflammatory actions has been used in several studies addressing different aspects of cardiovascular disease. A benefit obtained with the use of ALA in hypertension has also been described and that is because of uh, it's, it is able to modulate intracellular calcium. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD is considered the most prevalent liver disease worldwide. So NAFLD is frequently associated with metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes mellitus and dyslipidemia. We now see it even in lean people. So there is mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress and inflammation which play a key role in the pathogenesis of NAFLD. So the use of ALA was followed by improvement in serum levels of insulin, free fatty acids, glucose, IL-6, triglycerides and markers of inflammation and of innate immune activation in liver biopsy. Traumatic brain injury, TBI, causes primary mechanical injury of neuronal cells and it also initiates a secondary damage that occurs after the primary damage. That's a double impact. Now ALA may have a protective effect against oxidative reaction induced by neuronal apoptosis or cell death followed by TBI and this effect was likely due to association with the activation of a factor called as NRF2. Obesity. ALA has many actions that may result in weight loss and one of them is activation of a system called as AMPK. There's also other studies that suggest the ability of ALA in preventing insulin resistance which is a big challenge these days. As well, ALA may also modulate visceral adipose inflammation. Inflammation is a big part of obesity. Now let's look into some of the natural sources of alpha lipoic acid. Red meat, organ meat, green peas, tomatoes and spinach to name a few. Now humans only produce ALA in small amounts and fresh food are hard to consume on a regular basis so supplementation may be necessary. Typically 300 to 600 milligrams is sufficient and safe but 1200 milligrams is also used by many without any reported side effects. ALA or alpha lipoic acid is unique. 